So today I'm working on wood with the Kenny Hack. Uh, this is a standard materials test pattern that you can find on the Lightburn uh, Facebook group, except it has been modified. Um, instead of the 600 to 3,000 millimeters per minute, I got it ranged from 2,800 millimeters to 6,000 millimeters per minute. Uh, just because with the Kenny Hex solution, it's so much more reactive to lasers, it just can run phenomenally fast. So, made this change the test pattern. This here is set at 60% power um, with one coat of the 12% dilution of the Kenny Hack. Um, as you can see, it only slightly stained, you know, here's like the natural white color. Here's a one coat, brushed on, wipe off the excess, blow dry it for 30 seconds to a minute till it's good and dry. You'll kind of see the wood transition as the solution kind of cures the wood. Um, this wood, it just kind of stains a light tan. Some woods you might find it'll turn it gray. Um, you just have to do some tests until you uh, see what it does and how dark you want to put it on uh, you can dilute this down pretty low like I said this is only 12 percent and it's still working very good even at high speeds even 6,000 it had a pretty good gray strip I decided to run my test image at uh, 5,000 uh, a couple bands down kind of seemed where I had a nice uh, even gray in the lower ranges uh, this is run at the 0 0.1 line resolution and here are the results this image took uh, 17 minutes like a little couple seconds over uh, for like a 95 by 95 image uh, just imported directly into lightburn with the jarvis dither on it i do run it through a filter on my phone on a free app called pixart and inside of there you can turn it black and white and it has an HDR filter which kind of enhances black and white photos kind of makes the blackers blacker and the whiters whiter and then you can overall lighten it or darken it um, so I put the HDR uh, with the light effect lightened it up a little bit uh, trying to get his to his coat wasn't so dark um, like I said this is 5,000 millimeters per minute Quick run, very happy with it. Um, up next is going to be, a lot of people are worried about uh, running uh, these diode lasers at over 3,000 millimeters per minute. Like the manufacturer says the recommended maximum speed is 3,000. Um, so I'm going to be make a demo board where all the speeds on this gradient are set at 3000 and then just from weaker power to higher power so if we want to set the maximum speed at 3000 say I want to just do every job at 3000 because um, that's where I feel comfortable running and I don't feel like I'm exceeding what the manufacturer wants uh, we'll find out how low a power we can turn down the laser so you're minimizing the amount of abuse you're kind of putting on your laser and we'll see what that does we'll be running the same exact picture and we'll see how that turns out so here's that same image after I brushed it off I kind of thought it looked a little dark and I probably was still running a little too hot uh, kind of after I brushed it off some of the details kind of brushed off with it it's kind of the problem with like pine like this and cheaper woods is the grain some grains take the burn better than other you can kind of see this middle grain kind of streaked a little bit more than what the grain did at top it took the laser pretty good um, my next probably in my next video on wood uh, I'm gonna put a layer of white watercolor over it I've had pretty good luck with that where it kind of takes the look back to natural wood and it kind of seems to help even out that grain structure a little bit and uh, maybe helps burn a little more even. But we'll show that in the next video. Uh, continue the testing. Like I said, this is kind of a new process with this chemical. 
a lot of stuff to learn. I am hope some of you guys are out there making up batches of this and going to give it a try and uh, get more people working on it and we can really see what we can do with it. And follow up here, I got the other one burning at 3,000 millimeters per minute and set it roughly at 35% power. I'm thinking uh, that might even still be a little too strong. Should have maybe went to 30%, but we'll see how it turns out. So here's the second test board. This one here still has one coat of the Kenny hack put on. Except for this time, all the test swatches were set to run at 3,000 millimeters, kind of the manufacturer recommended fastest speed that you engrave at. Um, went with the fourth from the bottom. It's kind of hard to read. I got this file shrunk down small enough to fit on a 4 inch by 4 inch. Um, that's showing 35%, so that's what I ran my test at, kind of the first block where the 100% was nice and solid. The problem is, is this is just set with light burns fill. These are just drawn in squares that are set to fill. And I don't know how that translates over into the dithering effects. Like I'm using Jarvis, which is the highest quality one I think on there. And it seems to be that what turns out black on this one when you go to jarvis it might have to be five to ten percent lighter that's going to be i might try to recreate this file as an image instead of like a a line fill um, just so i can try different dithering patterns and see which one of them works better uh, might be another project for today um, if i ever get that done i'll make another video on that um, but here are the results for that one. Looks pretty much the same as when I ran it at uh, 5060, 5,000 millimeters and 60% power. Pretty similar. I'll kind of do the same brush test as I did on the other one. See how much of it brushes off if I was running the laser a little too hot. Um, and it was... Uh, I could probably just start putting coats of urethane on there, of clear coat. And if I don't brush it, I probably could kind of seal the image in as it is. If I put enough layers on where you can't scratch off any of the excess powder. Um, but this is all demo work. You got to learn to do some failures and figure out what is actually makes the best image overall in the end. Uh, that'd be kind of cheating just to seal the dust down in there. I mean, it looks really nice. But is it really uh, the right settings I should be running at in the future? So that's kind of what the brush test tells me. If I can brush, brush a lot of that color texture off, I might have been running a little too hot. But I'll, let's see what happens when I get done with that. So yeah, after the brush test, this one brushed off even more. All the places that were really dark on his outfit. We're kind of over burning and just leaving residue. I think this is what a lot of people refer to as ghosting. Um, that when you brush it off, it kind of leaves a slick effect and kind of didn't really get in there good or it just doesn't stick in. So, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of new to laser engraving. I don't know if the cure to that is lower power, lower speed, at a higher power. I, I, this is a lot of learning for me. Uh, I just started learning how to make half decent picture quality yesterday. So these are some of my first tests, trying to learn more as I go and sharing it with you guys. Hopefully you won't have to burn through so many test patterns if you, by the time I get through all these test blocks. All right. Thank you. We'll maybe do a few more tests at lower power. Uh, do one of these runs at this power on plain wood, just the bare wood, and see what effect that speed and that power would be on the bare wood if it would even burn into it at all without the Kenny Hack solution. Well, I'll stand by and I'll show you what I do. So, this is running one of them exact same uh, little wooden coasters. These are really cheap. You can get a four pack of these for like three dollars at Walmart. So I got them for testing out, but you can see 
I got the exact same settings I did the last image on, going 3,000 speed, 35% power. And without the Kenny Hack solution on there, it's not even scratching it. It's even in the blackest of areas, it's just going to barely maybe leave a trace here and there. So, really, no. I'd say normally to burn this wood, you'd be down in the 1,000 to 1,200 millimeters per minute, running higher power, you know. It can be done just burning straight into the bare wood, but you're going to be running a lot slower, a lot higher power. So that's kind of what this Kenny Hack solution does. It just makes the laser so much more reactive to where you can actually get up into decent production speeds and not just taking all day to burn one image. And that's what I'm trying to get, get across to everybody, that just how much faster you can produce products if you apply a coat of this Kenny Hack solution on there. There's a lot of things that need to be worked out to get the best results. Um, that's what I'm working on. But you should be able to instantly tell that how much better burning on wood, canvas, there's different applications to be found yet. Um, but especially for wood, it just speeds it up and makes it work so much better. So a quick lesson for you other newbies out there. This was my uh, materials test swatch. And when I first ran it, this fourth line up looked to be the best. It was one where I forgot the first solid black color. But I didn't run the brush test on it. And if I would have, I'd have seen that a good portion of it brushed off. If, and if I'd have went down to 30 to start with, that would have probably been a better starting point. So my next sample, I moved it down to 30, and I also took off the HDR effect uh, that I had on the photo before. Just went with a straight image, drug straight into light berm, no pre-filters applied. Just let uh, light burn turn it to a gray picture, um, and ran it at 30%, seeing if that HDR was making my blacks too black. And that's what was causing me to lose uh, some of my details. Uh, hopefully it works and I no longer have to bother with the big GIMP or trying to pre-process anything. Just drag it into light burn. Let, the, let it apply the Jarvis. And that's all that might need, might need to have to do anymore. That would be a nice change just not having to mess with the image before I burn it. So here's the last uh, batch test batches for this video. This one here was at 3,000 millimeters, 30% power, 0 0.100 resolution. I put the little up arrow because I was cutting on the Y axis. You'll see why on the flip side. And using Jarvis. This had no pre-filter applied, just the image drug in. I just had to crop off the image to fit the square. Just uh, didn't adjust any brightness or contrast to it in light burn. Just went straight ahead and applied the Jarvis and let it run. And it's looking a lot better. It's gonna. I still haven't done the brush test on it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to mostly survive. And on the other side, this is at 5,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power, 0 0.100 rev. Uh, resolution and I got the arrow drawing left to right because I was cutting on the x-axis and still in Jarvis now the difference is there is a power difference between the x-axis and the y-axis just the way the diode laser focuses when it's cutting vertically on the long axis which will, which is the y-axis it will cut has a little more power to it just by the way the beam is focused than if it cuts on the X axis. So if you're cutting on the X and you really like your results and you switch to the Y axis where you set it to 90 degrees, you might have to drop your power two and a half, five percent or if vice versa. If you were cutting on the Y and you liked your results and you switch to the X axis, you might have to add two and a half to five percent power to keep the same image quality uh, just because of the little slight power rating difference between the power power cut and the lower cut 
Just something else to keep in mind. I'll do the brush test, show you the results, slap a layer of clear coat on here, matte finish, and we'll see how the image holds up, uh, whether it keeps the detail or if the matte finish drowns them out. And that'll be the end of the video. So this is after the brush test uh, on the 3000. It just very slightly brushed away from the very darkest parts. Probably just needed to go down another two and a half percent five percent and it had been good um really close to being just right i think even that image there is pretty dang good we'll see how it looks after the clear coat maybe it might uh, bright even it out and make the color look good on the flip side this is the 5000 uh very just a little bit brushed off on the darkest part of his coat there um, other than that the image stayed pretty close to what it was before like I said it was it's right there just about right uh, it'd be really tough to adjust it much better uh, for especially at 5,000 millimeters per minute which I don't think you'll find anybody else burning images on diodes at 5,000 millimeters at this speed, even 100% power without the Kenny hack on there would have very little. You might be able to do a silhouette burn but and a line burn, but trying to get images out of it, it wouldn't be possible. So I'll show you the final results with the clear coat, and we'll be done. So here's the final results. This is the 5000 side with the matte clear coat. Didn't lose much detail in it. I've had some times when you apply the clear coat over to seal it uh, that a lot of the details get muted out and kind of lose them. Uh, that might have been due to ghosting issues and it was just the powder on the surface reacting with the uh, coating uh, that it kind of makes it disappear. So that's why it's important to try to get it to where you have very little brush off when you're done. I think your details will stay in there longer. And same with the 3000 side. Uh, after I sprayed it, I mean, I just got one quick coat going in both directions, up and down and left to right, just to put a quick seal on it. I could put more coats and get a better seal, but you get the idea. Um, once again, if you find this useful, like and subscribe. Maybe instead of... Uh, buying any add-ons for like the gimp or anything before you spend your thirty dollars on that go spend ten dollars to get the few little home chemicals you need to make this give it a try uh i really don't know if i'm gonna bother using any more of the plugins anymore i might just be dragging the images straight in with woodworking anyways um really impressed with the results so far so on my next video, I'm going to apply another coat of white watercolor over the stain. Kind of helps turn it back to a little more whiter of wood and might help the image pop a little bit more. But that'll be all in the next video. Look for it.